man, I'm back. Ladies and gents, this is your host, Rebel. I'm back after three weeks, almost a month. And that wasn't my intention. I literally wanted to do the next episode after a week or so. But anyways, and I'm doing this because, yeah, the topic, I don't know if this is the topic I want to talk about, but I need to finish this season. And the season one, and this is exactly how I'm doing this podcast. Season one was all about my journey, my story so far. And my current situation, man, I don't know. I wish I could tell you. Extremely stressed. You see this? It's a cyst. It's big. Remember I talked about this? That it started growing out of nowhere. I did show this to my doctor. But previously, I, have, I was, well, suffering from stomach issues, right? Bloating issues, I mentioned. If you follow my well previous podcast, then I got that sorted out. This popped up, right? And then multiple other stuff just keep going. And then I said, yeah, this is real struggle. It keeps coming. It's never going to stop. I mean, this is exactly the thing. And why I'm still stuck with this? Yeah, I did show this to my doc. And um, she said, she referred me to some other doctor. She said, uh, go to this skin specialist and they will drain this. And it was almost two, it was two months ago. Yeah. And they did call me for an appointment. I've been so busy because when life gives you so much of stress and when you're in debt, student loan kicked in, right? <laughs> it's, so I have to prioritize things. And when I realize, okay, this is, it can wait. But it's pathetic. You do know that I do these unboxing videos and stuff. And when people see this thing, I do my best to edit and keep it away. But when people see this bump, it's it's weird look at this it's huge it's huge for real like it's it's huge man i don't know i don't know but yeah and my peasant insurance but that's not the point the thing is i have to make an appointment i have to go get it done priorities and i'm i'm deep in that i'm running out of money literally i'm running out of, i'm running out of uh, cash <laughs> and the point is you're like okay how is that possible why don't you just stop spending i'm not spending anything on myself I didn't buy anything for myself this year, literally. It's just that I have my software that I run. And yes, my stuff, it, it costs money. Like I mentioned, I have a video where I talked about, um, what was that? 700 or $800 I'm spending a month on software, mid-journey, AI tools and stuff. And I need those tools to run some of the things and learn. I'm in a position where if I don't figure it out and go all in, it's just not gonna happen. I'm technically homeless. You guys don't understand this, right? Like, I've been traveling all my life. And obviously, I don't want to repeat the same stuff. And hence, I, was, I did this season one episode about my story. And I wanted to end it with basically, yeah, I'm coming to the topic, I know. And by the way, before doing this, I wanted to, well, hit the pill, the ADHD pill. But I said, no, I don't need that right now. And I usually take it when I'm on a monk mode, when I'm on to some real work. I don't need it when I'm actually doing videos. Yeah, I, I never taking it for videos. Usually when I'm doing the behind the scene work, sure. And yeah, I'm prescribed, right? But that's not the point. And yes, I will go off topic. It's just how it is. This is my podcast. It's my therapy. I should do this more often, man. I feel so better. If I don't do this thing, I feel I'm just keeping it in my mind. So is it better to actually talk about it, get it out so people can learn from it maybe? It helps me as well, right? Like I don't have to expect anything like, prof like money-wise. Because my health is very important to me. If I can do something to actually help myself be stress-free, I would do anything. How do you be stress-free? Seriously, how do you be stress-free? Meditate and all that stuff? Because my aunts who are like, uh, I don't want to name names, multi-millionaire rich landlords told me money doesn't buy happiness. I mean, you're telling to a guy who is six-figure in debt. Think about it first before you tell something to somebody, man. Like, seriously. That's, that makes me mad at times. Like, come on, you don't understand the people's position. You're just like, yeah, money does. Give me money and let me, be, let me show you how to be happy. Like, just give me money, I'll show you how to be happy. And when I say money, again, I just don't like the term. It feels like, oh, look at the fiat dollar. Don't, you're chasing money. No, I want options. I want options. I want choices in life. Because then you can do whatever you want. You can help cats, charities. You can help the stray cats. They're, Man, I can talk all day, I mean, literally, because there's so many things happening in this world. The war is going on. I literally didn't want to... It does affect all of us. But we still, I mentioned, oh man, why are you having... Why are you joking around this stuff? You're not... 
my mom and dad would say the same thing. Um, if my aunts, they met me right now, and if I was joking around, do you know what's happening in this world, in the West Side, in this war, and this, that? Yeah, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm concerned. I can't do much. I'm doing whatever I can. I'm paying my charity. I'm sharing my messages with YouTube and whatever I can. I, I'm in six feet dead. My student loan kicked in. Interest is going up. Not, that, not, not only that, credit card debt, then obviously, I told you all this thing, right? And it's not about me, me, me. The challenge is how I can get out of it. What am I supposed to do about it? Because if I'm going zero, if I'm running out of cash, what am I going to do? Like, like, literally homeless? Like, you, you don't understand. I'm not joking. I'm not, like, making anything up. You might see all this stuff around me, right? Yeah, that's what, that's what I, where I spend my money. It's just like buying a Lambo. Some people enjoy buying Lambos and stuff. I like my surrounding. I like to keep things like this. So I can, I mean, this is how I, my mind, you know, works. Same thing with tools, the tools I invest in, like uh, AI tools. It's just like, I need them. And yes, I'm trying my best to uh, reduce the ones that I don't, I don't need. I'm basically uh, minimalize, but I can't go zero. I need the leverage and that is the tools. Instead of buying Lambo, some people enjoy that. I enjoy this. Simple. Like if, hey man, what do you want for your birthday? Um, maybe a license, a license key to this tool, a software, or maybe some Bitcoin. I'll take some Bitcoin. But anyways, I'm coming to the topic. It's about college lifestyle. And why I'm telling you this, yeah, it's only six minutes to this thing. And this is an unedited podcast as usual. I love this podcast out of everything, all the channels I have. None of them are successful. Barely, well, the one that is monetized barely makes any money, uh, of course. But I've been experimenting. And you might think, oh, look at this guy. He's trying hard everywhere. No, not really. I've not done anything in the videos-wise, which doesn't, like, uh, please me in a way. Like, I'm not use, used to doing I'm not. I don't enjoy doing. Okay? No. And I've realized one thing. That, yes, I didn't do anything with thumbnail, like clickbait thumbnail. Hence, maybe that doesn't work. So, if I create a channel for experiment, even if I do, clickbait title and thumbnail might work better than every other channel I have. Can you believe this? I believe it will. I kind of feel like that. But I don't want to do that. And yes, now I'm going to get into the topic, but let me tell you another thing. Most of the YouTubers, actually, YouTube is changing. All this podcasting platform, a lot of things are changing. And you have to adapt to it. And I'll tell you this, what I'm doing is extremely out of the thing, like this world, in a way. Why, why, why I'm telling you this, I don't focus on, so it's like a Steve Jobs kind of thing. Steve Jobs, like people didn't know they wanted the iPhone. I mentioned this previously. You don't know what they want. The audience don't know what they want. So Steve Jobs, Apple tells you, yeah, this is something that you want. And then you are like, oh yeah, you're right. I want this. So instead of following the same footsteps as Mr. Beast and all the same thumbnails, like, oh, if this works out for them, it should work out for me. I should copy them. I thought maybe the audience I'm trying to reach I don't know. There's no, they don't exist. I have to create them. And what I mean by that is, they don't know that they need my video. They don't know that they need to hear this. You need to hear this. Exactly. You get the point? So, hence, I don't follow any other stuff. And the last uh, podcast I watched, Samir and Colin, yeah, they're good dudes, man. Like, it's interesting to watch because they bring creators. And, one th and they did this interview with the CEO of YouTube. That was the last one. Pretty good. Decent. So one thing I noticed, uh, well, taken away from that was uh, all one thing huge, the one big thing matters, AI will come and a lot of disruptions will happen. People will change. This is going to go down and go up. One thing that will like stand out is connecting with the audience, the authenticity. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been doing that since the beginning. And I don't know what's happening. I mean, it doesn't work. I can blame, I can blame you for not listening to my stuff, not giving me enough watch time, which doesn't, again, trigger the algorithm. I can blame the algorithm. I can blame God. I'm like, God, why are you doing this to me? Like, seriously. Putting me through so much challenges. Most people talk about, hey, man, I made millions of dollars and this and this. And I'm telling them, yeah, I'm sitting in this, like, like a prison cell in a way. I mean, yeah, come on, man. This is my man cave. And literally, I said, one thing I would want to do is like stop traveling for a while. I need a proper base. Yes, this is my temporary base. But I need some money so I can pay off the debt, pay off student loan. I'll tell you this. This is my priority, believe it or not. Okay, my health is number one priority because if I can take care of my health and why I'm doing this, because this affects my health. I'm so stressed that even if I'm, you can see that I'm losing weight, man, 
If you think, hey, oh yeah, I've been eating all day, then I would have been big and fat, right? But if you compare me from the first videos, I've been just losing weight. And yeah, it's because I barely can eat and I barely eat as well. It's everything together. Because if you eat too much, then you're spending too much and then you can focus on real work and you're get, getting in more debt. I have to prioritize. And if I don't take this seriously, it's the end. Okay, there's nothing more I can discuss. Of course, my season one is not going to end. I'll have season two. I have some plans which I'm going to discuss, okay? I have, so I, again, I want to do something which is not for the audience and all that, but it's something which might benefit a lot of people. It's not that I'll bring people and interview them. Yeah, not the famous one, but maybe the underdogs. Let's see. I'll discuss that some other time, okay? Let's actually fe uh, finish season one first. So again, coming back to this. The challenges, is, it's brutal, okay? And I've traveled so much in my life, countries, places, different, believe it or not. Yeah, it's crazy. I just talk about my US lifestyle and the college lifestyle, well, in this season one. Guess what? I've never touched anything prior to that. There's so much more, but that's not the point. There's so much already to learn from this and that's about it. So again, thank you for listening to me for 11 minutes. Now you understand the situation. So my priorities, before I get to the topic, why college is a scam, then fraternity lifestyle. I want to talk about fraternity lifestyle. Being a founder, one of the founders of Lambda Chi Alpha and VCU, Virginia Commonwealth. So I'll talk about that. College is a scam, 100%, believe it or not. And now it's, it's worst. It's worst, man. I, I don't know where it's going. If I had a choice, like they said, oh, would you send your kids to college? I probably would think quite a few times, nah. I, I'll let them choose. It's not me. At a certain, again, that's another topic. Hence, I do this. You could be a parent or you might be a parent later on, right? So this could be helpful depending, or if you're in 14, if you're 15, 18 years old, or you're about to go to college, you're deciding to go to college, right? You're not sure. You want to join the fraternity Greek lifestyle because you want to be a band of brother or whatever, right? Go party, whatever. So let me actually clarify a few things. And everything I'm going to tell you is my, literally, I've lived it. Okay, I'm not making up anything, everything. Since the beginning of whatever I've said, I lived it. So, and some things I'll forget, obviously. It's probably not important. And I literally have this notepad. I thought I would write the names of all the roommates. I, you know, when I said roommates, we didn't live in the same room. I lived in an apartment. It was a townhouse, um, three levels. And there were four bedrooms. It was decent. I had a very, uh, I still remember. My room was the biggest one because I moved after two years, I moved to the bigger room because of one huge dude. Well, a big, huge problem. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But I'm always, I wanted to actually write the roommate's name. But I'm like, nah, there's too many. In 10 years, I had a lot of roommates. Yeah. And some were nasty. Bad experience, man. All different cultures as well. Homos. Yeah, sure. <laughs> one was. So I'm coming back to that. No offense. Whatever I'm going to tell you again, experience. My two cents. Don't get offended. Keep your emotions out the gate okay and take it with a grain of salt some people might call me oh look this guy is this man this is the ultimate jihad i'm going through do you understand that the struggle i'm going through right now that when you're in such a position if you had kids and you can't pay debt and you can't feed them it's like hey kid go to sleep because the dream that's the best thing you can have i can give you a good life in this world so please go to sleep so have some good dreams sad I mean, it's, it's, it's nasty. When, when you have kids and you can do something, that makes you do some stupid thing or might make you do stupid, stupid thing, right? Oh, I think I should, some, I should grift. But I'm going to cut corners. I'm going to do this. Maybe not for me, more for my kid at least. Or at least I don't want to uh, put them in the same route so they become poor, po in, you know, go down the poverty route. And it's a never-ending cycle. Oh, I couldn't do something, so let them do it. Or let them do it. I mean, no, man. I mean, you know, it's, it's a brutal. You don't want them in that position. What actually, and I'll tell you this, every decision has consequences, every decision. I still remember, everything I talked about, everything I mentioned, everything you know, I decided to do had some consequences. And it probably will in the future. And I'm very careful. Some decisions I made in my life, when I talked about my DUI and all the stuff, right? Some of them are, yeah, I, I'm accountable and stuff. But if you tell me it's all your fault, no, man. I wish I could tell, I mentioned all the stuff because there are some, obstacle and variables that you can't control and that's the problem imagine you're on the street i just you know i got back from dc like when, I, when i'm driving in the 91 right so many cars can you control if one dude goes like starts road rage think about it for a second that's a variable 
Well, I, man, uh, let me give you a real example. This one truck in front of me, okay? This dude, out of nowhere, and this is a real story. This dude was like almost hitting my car. It's almost, man. I don't know what was it. It was, he, he literally did like this, this, this. And then honk, I'm honking and I stopped. I wouldn't cross him because this guy is doing this for, for just a few seconds. I am like, okay, I don't know. What's the deal? I'm not going to call cops and stuff because it doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in my own different mindset. If it was total, dip, I said, guess what? I can control his car or the way he's driving. I can just control my actions. So let me just pause back for a bit. So I was, I changed lanes. So from the left, total left, I just came because I could cross him, but I just don't know what's in his mind, man. Like for real, like I, maybe he's drunk or maybe he literally wants to kill me. I don't know. Literally some people are crazy. So I was like, let's actually wait. So what he did was he actually changed lanes and then I just sped. I was like, okay, <laughs> I could chase him, but what's the point? I have my own battle. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. I have so many, there's so many vigilant out there. And not only that, I've seen so many hypocrites with so much of money and stuff sitting around. And they come and tell me and stuff like, hey man, why don't you just go and protest? You know, there'll be war in this country. There's this and that. I'm like, bro, the most biggest jihad right now is in me, within me. The challenges I'm going through. You know, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Anyways, college, 16 minutes of shenanigans and no college story. Wow. Now, let's get back to college lifestyle. Started my college. And if you stick around longer, you probably will see where, what I talk about, where I go with this thing. Because I'm about to reevaluate my entire game plan as usual. I do that all the time. Because if something doesn't work, you have to. If something works, I started Amazon. God is kind. He's testing me to whatever level. I don't know. He knows why. I'll just keep playing. I'll just keep playing along. I just want to give in. Just I don't want to give in to that this dark world. And you know, it, because that doesn't resonate with me. And when you're in this position in mid-30s or 40s or 50s, this is like one one time in. Like, think about this SBF. He's what, 30 something? Stan Bangman Freed. Or any other any other dudes. Like when you're in this position, you think about it. So what's the mission? What's the end goal? What do you want to do? Yeah, sure. When you're in 20s, you want to go to college, you want to party, you want to do this and have sex, whatever, right? But after some time, people realize some people don't. And I have all kinds of people in my fraternity. I mentioned some people dropped out. There's some dude who was literally living on welfare and welfare. He has kids now. Welfare, welfare, smoking weed in his room. And then his cat is not clean. It made me sad. That's another lifestyle. And that dude was in my fraternity. Maybe he still is or whatever. But, you know, all kinds of people. And it's... You get to learn a lot and it's up to you how you, uh, you know, interpret, interpret like and uh, break down all that, you know, stuff. So whatever. Now, if you stick along, um, stick around longer, maybe you will see. And uh, I hope I can give something like positive, believe it or not. Because if, if I give, if I was here to say, you know, I'm here to fail, then what was the point of doing this? I'm here to do whatever I can as long as I'm alive. But I realized, oh my God, bro, stress is one thing that you cannot control. Remember what I said about this? It's this is all stress. There's no reason for me to get into any kind of issues because I try my best to keep myself very straight up and clean and I barely eat. So my cholesterol, bad, bad cholesterol is a little high because of, let's not even get there, because of a mom's curry and all that. I do my best to eat my own food as usual. But the point is, that's why I don't eat outside. I, I avoid all the um, you know, get together and all this stuff. But yes, bad habits. And, and my doctor said, you know, you can't do much. Sometimes it's just the body. Your body is just like a bad cholesterol. Maybe it's just what it is. It's not extremely bad, but I was like, wow, I haven't done anything for 30, like uh, six, seven months. No drink, nothing. How is it possible? So, you know, I like to do this. I like to test it. And I like to do, uh, what do you call it? Revaluate. Take out the variables and see what was the root cause of it. So, for example, I barely have any sugar. So, I'm going to be going to my doctor again, hoping, inshallah, in Feb. So, I can try to get, you know, deal with this and as well as, again, my blood work. I try to do it every year, twice a year, whatever. So, that's, it's my concern. If I can't take care of myself, I cannot reach whatever goals. Even if I attempt to, I'll be just flying around. And I'll tell you a lot of times, this is real. The gut is so important. And my gut... It's, and if you're stressed, it affects your gut, all right? My hairdresser friend, Lisa, she says, man, 
stress gives you stomach cancer. Sex stress can give you so much a problem. It's how do you? It's something that you you can you can see. You know, it's so weird. Do you get this thing? Like it's a, it's a worse disease. It's a worse disease that's that is the cause of massive um, death. Like everything in the world. Like most of the stuff is stress. So how do we uh, be stress free? Be debt free. Be independent. Be free. Have enough money and wealth so you can be uh, have options. I think that's the op that's the only way I can be stress free. Me. I'm talking about myself because I have. I tried everything. Hey, I lost weight. I'm working out. Like I do my best. So now what, what's the deal? I eat clean. I mean, I can, you know, I'm pretty much in monk mode to some extent. So what's the deal? I still feel, feel some stomach cramp. Maybe it's because of coffee. Obviously coffee messes up. Yeah. And that reminds me, I need a sip. All right. Wow. Is this even supposed to be uh, the college uh, is a scam story? Yeah. Let's stick to that. Come on. It's, it's okay. It's all about the stuff, right? You have to understand what makes a person actually go to a college, right? Like, and then everything starts. And when I talk about it, it's going to be pretty short, you know, you know, I won't drag it too long. But regardless, health and stress is number one. So I feel if whoever talks about money doesn't buy happiness, fine. I don't want happiness right now. I want to be stress-free. Happiness is a choice which is also influenced by environment. Hear me out. I didn't steal this from anybody. This is my way of thinking. It's happiness is a choice which is influenced by your environment. So if my environment, if somebody was messed up or doing something stupid, yes, that would influence my happiness. So if I, even if I chose to be happy, I might not be happy. Make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's how I see it. I mean, yeah, you can be happy for whatever reason sometimes. And you might see me that I'm joking around. I'm doing this. That's just me. Maybe that's my reflect like that's my body how you know copes with it the stress i guess i'm not making up anything <laughs> like every time i'm doing something spontaneous it's probably just it just comes out and i'm just saying it right so i guess it's just how my body copes with it and i i guess god has his own way of doing things and god you are helping me out some way so i appreciate it and i'm doing my best to understand and hence i go to the doctor and i told her told her i'm not going to take this adovacitin yet Let's again do it for some time because she gave me this cholesterol medication. I said, okay, let's take it next time. Let me again try this for another six months and see what happens. So I'm not doing anything much. I had no alcohol this year. What is happening? Like, it doesn't make sense. So that's what I'm telling you. Is this stress related? Do you think I'm on bad cholesterol? Is because of stress? Man, I mean, seriously, it doesn't add up. When you think about this, that you could literally eradicate so much of stuff issues if you can be stress free. And believe it or not, personal experience, if you're rich, oh, rich don't, yeah, because they have money and wealth, but they, some, some did the wrong way. Some are messing up because they don't have their iman, faith straight. They're messing up with other stuff, BS. That's why. So that's not, that's why they're not happy. It's not because they have wealth and they are not happy. It's because they're not utilizing it in the right way. Simple. I mean, if I could give it to my uh, nieces and nephews, if I could pay off their uh, tuition fee, if I could pay off my kids' tuition fees, they never have to have get in debt. That is happiness. For me, that is happiness. That is stress-free. For me, that is stress-free. I don't know about you. If you don't agree, okay, maybe you're in Mars. Hold on, I'm in LDN. All right, ladies and gents. Let's talk about college is a scam now. Oh, yeah, there you go. I, I wanted to wear this, but you know what? Nah, let's just stick to my t-shirt for now. Don't want to show, show you my guns. So, all right. AXA, this is Lambda Chi Alpha, and this is... That's me, Hustler. <laughs> Lambda Chi Alpha, Chapter Founder, VCU, Alpha Class. So, where am I going with this? I started college, 2008. I went to J. Sarge Community College. Why? Hey, as an immigrant, first of all, you come here. And I wish I knew about life. Then my decisions would have been different. I've, I wish my mom and dad were smart enough just educated themselves because they're so educated I and mean, that's what happens right sometimes like you're so smart that you end up being the most unsmart i guess so anyways not trying to make fun or anything but it just makes you think sometimes that how come some of, it just happens in the same family how come some of the rich cousins and relatives they just keep buying land and helping each other secure their properties and debt and stuff while over here somebody doesn't have on the other side someone comes from other country 
and decides to take it so easy. Someone who was here since 80s and still working hard, making more and more and more, when they could retire, while someone on the other side just moved from country and just decided not to do anything and let the kids just grow up the way they could and figure it out. That's fine. The kids will figure it out. But at least the, the least you could do was equip them or tell them this is the source. I think you should focus on the finance. Don't take debt or this. When you just tell somebody who is in 20s or just, just getting started, oh, he will figure it out or let him figure it out. Oh, you know, he doesn't, he's not, he's like, he's not like anybody else. Um, he doesn't listen. We should beat him like everybody else. Like, you know, third world countries, like parents, like, yeah, we should beat him. We, we didn't beat him when he was a kid. That's why maybe he's like spoiled. That's why he doesn't, he does, he does all the different things. Oh, that's why he doesn't have a job. He should just follow like everybody else. He doesn't do it. And that's why his life is so miserable. Really? Maybe. Okay. Wow. Can you just see all the thing that just comes out of me? It's crazy. Hey, podcast, you're just nasty. You make me say all the truth, man. Nasty podcast. Anyways, listen, that's the thing, okay? Because when somebody, and I can help it, I cannot go back in time. If I did, I was like, wow, shoot. I could have made something. I, I would have changed the game plan. See the difference? There's a difference. Like, yes, I have DUI. I have, I've drank like crazy. I've, I've gone through crazy experiences, going to jail. Sometimes I feel like, what, was that jail a vacation for me? Sometimes a jail is a vacation, bro. Hey, just say, okay? Nobody wants to go there, okay? It's bad. It's humiliating. Never. But when it happens, it happens. You learn from it. You give back. Teach other people. Give experiences, right? And that's the only way we can grow, man. And that's the only thing I can learn and get out of it, believe it or not. I mean, if I can make money, I can get from karma. And I mentioned this. If I have kids, maybe they'll watch this. If anything happens to me, they'll watch my podcast and learn what happened to it, you know, what the dad went through. Or the, the, my niece, nephew, they will know what they're, and somebody might just pick up from there where I leave and move, you know, take it forward. I mean, that's the true mission of Islam. You just take the good stuff forward until the day of judgment, and that's it. The moment your legacy, your thing stops, it ends. You know? I mean, that's exactly what's happening. The corporations will do whatever to take control. The poor people can't have much kids. If you look at it, the philosophy, like the whole thing is real. I mean, it's, it's insane, right? The prophecy, so-called. Like, because if you have less money and if you're poor, again, I know I'm going off on a you know, different topic, but I'm coming to the college stuff in a second. If, you, if you're poor, like let's say, right? If you have less money, you won't have much kids, many kids. My, my cousins back in Bangladesh, right? They don't have many kids. Like barely compared to our grandmothers. My, if you think about this for a second, our grandmothers, they had like five kids. My dad have brothers and sisters, right? Uh, now, how many, think about this now. What, what has changed? And I'm telling you, I kid you not. Rich people want to have more kids. Look at Elon Musk. Look at all these people. Because they want to spread around. Poor people, what do you want to do? But yes, a lot of poor people in third world countries, they have a lot of kids. And I kid you not, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to begin the thing, right? One dude, I still remember, oh my God, my grandparents here and this dude who was, who was living in a hut, you know? I'm talking about a hut. Like the roof was made of tin. Tin, tin the hut, like straw. <laughs> I've been there, like I said, though, like when I was like two, three years, four, five years, because I come from there, right? I kid you not. That dude, obviously, he passed away, but he, will, he, has, he has son. And he, they were all, like, I would say, uh, lower class, if, if that's the thing. Back then, obviously, like, we were not anywhere mid -class, you know, middle class, whatever you want to call it. I'm talking about 20, 30 years back kind of thing, right? These dudes, they had land. They had a hut. We had these decent places or whatever, my grandparents, right? Guess what? This whole, my grandparents' house is getting broken into pieces because, you know, it's growing, but nobody's moving out. I mentioned this. And that dude over there, he sent his kid to Dubai long time back, long time back. He died, obviously. Um, his kid earned enough money to literally build a five-story apartment in that freaking land. Think about this for a second. <laughs> it's crazy. I see, I've seen things, man. I mean, it's, 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 it's insane. Like the, the dude, literally like poverty level. The dude just had his land. He utilized it properly. And now the whole thing changed, the dynamics changed. Look who's where now. They used to look up to us, like they used to come to us for food and stuff in a way. Not that we are going there, like our cousins and they're going there. I'm just saying like, wow. I mean, they're doing much well off now because I also found out one of my uncle, 
back there, he decided to sell one of his lands long time back for mere pennies, man. Because he was desperate for money. When you're desperate, people will take advantage of you. But this is the point. His decision cost him so much. And now, and his son, I, be I believe I mentioned one in my previous episode, he's one of his son. Either he got murdered or he committed suicide or something. He was my, one of my closest cousins. I used to talk to him. He was my very close cousin. He died. He hung himself or he, he was killed. I don't know. I'm assuming money problems because he asked me for money a long time back. But I feel I was whatever. But then, yeah, I can understand that. But anyway. Man, money has money is not the root of all evil. Not having wealth is the root of all evil. Wealth accumulation is required. Not having wealth is the root of all evil. 30 minutes in, college lifestyle. Went to college because I had to. If I had a choice, I wouldn't. Because I just know I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. I didn't know what was that. Because you need to discover the passion. But I knew that wasn't my thing. Going to the college as a robot, you know, like, and just following exactly what they tell you. And I did that. I'll tell you exactly my experience, right? I'm not joking. So here, now shortcut, fast forward, like when I'm going to go. Two years. So instead of two years in community college, I took three years. You know why? Because I failed in pre-calculus. Not once, but twice. Who takes pre-calculus, man? And calculus, like, I, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a computer guy. I can do this and that, but I'm not the best in math. Sure, I understand math, like logical stuff. Who does sine and cosine and Pythagoras theorem now? Like seriously, man, and all this, all this weird, whatever, I understand. And now it makes sense. Oh, it was all just a game. It was just to trick your mind to, you know, uh, this and this, but whatever. For that, I had to pay so much. And I have to get in debt, student loan debt and all that, right? Really? I mean, I could do something else, like whatever. But that happened. So now the point is, went to the college, I would computers. And my dad, no, oh, you know what? Business and computers are booming. And guess what? 2008, recession. I had no idea. What is recession? What is this? Because I just moved and I went to college. I didn't understand anything. So I understand such a bad scenario because now it makes sense. Because the moment I started learning, educating myself, I'm like, okay, wow. I came in the worst time. I got into college. I did this and this. And none of, nobody told me anything. I kid you not. I'm not blaming anybody. But it shows you the society or people, all kinds of people around you. So either you teach yourself. I mean, if you don't teach yourself, then I don't know. Like, literally, if you're expecting somebody come, to come and feed you, God, is, God gave me a sign. And I keep saying this. I've seen a lot of people who, who has something to stand behind, like who has someone to stand behind right in a way. Uh, well, my dad was supporting me or whenever I've gone through, that day I was reading this thing. I kid you not, I need to see this. Uh, because you know what? I wanted to print this out. I wanted to print this out because this is real. And it's just something that, oh my God, I don't know if I can find it. It was something with Ronaldo, that Ronaldo, his mother, it was something a little touching, but yeah, I don't think I can find it right now. So in, in short, basically, <laughs> yeah, it's irony, irony. So Ronaldo, right? He loves his mom because his mom, he, it's, it's, it was a meme that his mom did everything for him to make him get him wherever he is right now. Like the football player, right? His mom did everything, sacrificed everything, literally. Like that's what he says. And when, when, my case is totally opposite. I, I kid you not. I'm not... I can't, tell you, I can't tell you lies, man. And I'm not saying, okay, I was abused and all that. But yeah, it's real. I never had any sort of like thingy on my head. Like, it's just me, wild. That's why I'm what I am. Like, literally. Like, it's just I had to figure out every single thing. Even right today, I'm figuring out why all my cousins, they barely have any clues. Their dad and mom literally have their st stuff straightened up. They have their property. Their dad have their everything straightened up. I'm telling you this. Like, their dad paid their loans off. And I'm not saying everybody can do that. They're like one person of the people. But I'm saying, if their family can think, it's, it's a mindset, it's a mentality. If their family thinks that, oh, I should do this for my kids, then how come others in the same, other, same family, there are the other, my relatives, my own family, and my other relatives, right? They are there. But like, nah, I'm not going to do anything. Let my son do it or whatever. Yeah, sure, I will. But... In the beginning, you're supposed to give them the right knowledge because time, I realize, is so important. I'm going to get so many comments and say, man, you talk about college, but you didn't say about college. Yeah. 
you have to understand the message. Because once you understand your true thing, if you go to college, one thing you can take away that you have to, you need to network and understand the other crazy lifestyle. The moment you realize it's just, and now things have changed. If you didn't ask me now, man, think 10 times before you get into debt, student loan debt, okay? You do know that the student loan debt has started. And I had to file a pause or whatever, uh, the interest rate, man, it's just going up. Yeah, I mean, it's just brutal. I want to pay it off. But guess what? My dad told me once back then, you know what? Just wait, they're going to forgive it for a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I should invest in crypto. Then I can pay off back soon, this and this. Those things make you do stupid like thing, man. I'm not saying investing in crypto is bad or this is bad, but you have to be real. Oh, forgiven? No, there's no forgiven. There's no this, there's no that. I took, a, took out a loan, I got to pay it back. If that was the mission from the beginning, I could have taken, you know, it would have been sorted out. But then people have all this mentality and mindset which might influence you and that will make you do stupid things. Hence, you have to be very careful who you follow, who you take advice from. Whether it's your mom and dad, whether it's your sister, whether it's your cousin, relatives, whoever. And that's why I said, I'm only just here. I only listen to God. I'm here to do a fulfill a mission. And I feel like that's the thing. There's nothing I can do more than that. Right? I mean, there's nothing I can do. Like I mentioned this in the previously, like, just literally last episode. That was the mission of life. You ha- if you have kids, it means you believe in the future. If somebody doesn't, you know, if you don't believe in the future, I talked to my friend Ronnie. He's one of my very good friends. Another total different lifestyle guy. His wife, so he's, ma- he's, uh, he's married to his fiance, fiance, but he has kids with two other girls. Um, one of the, he's one of his, I think he's one of his, his son's mother, he sh- she shot herself. She shot herself in the car, in the, in the parking lot. And I don't want to talk about this right now, man. I feel, I feel bad. And he, he was telling me, I never, you know, he's like, so I never imagined I would be with somebody who was this weak, like this weak, that I would shoot himself in this parking lot having a son. And my son, when he saw the mother, I don't know, man, it's brutal. He's like, and they had to change place. So he changed place because he doesn't want to, the son doesn't want to live in that same place. But whatever, man, it's just, he told me, you know, he's, he told me a lot of things. Like, he's like, you know, I believe in future. That's why I have kids. He has kids. And he's like, I believe in future. I'm like, yeah, bro, look at this. He, he's, his lifestyle is very different and crazy, but he's very sensible. <laughs> I can connect to very different people, but I'll tell you this. He's one of my very good friends that I can reach out to. And he's very, he will understand, he understands. And he told me something. He's like, so you're going to do something in five years, man. I, I believe it. I'm like, yeah, I think I will do something because I have no other choice. He's like, look. You, you, you know that. I'm like, yeah, I also know that I can't, I'm not overconfident. And th- th- I just have, but I have to do it. He's like, see, you also know that you're not overconfident. I'm like, yeah, man. And the fact that you acknowledge and you understand that position, it's rare because people don't understand certain things we say. They think it's just words. When we talk about metaverse, when we talk about making money online and Amazon, it's just words for normies. Because at the end of the day, money speaks. If it doesn't matter where I live, if I literally had like Rolexes and stuff, hold on, where's my Rolex? Oh, it's actually charging, battery's dead. So if I was wearing all this stuff, people would judge me instantly like, oh my God, I should listen to him because he has a lot of money. But they don't question how he got the money. I mean, he could inherit the money. My cousins, they have millions of inherited money. Like they could, but I don't know how much they know about the real world. I'm sure they know a lot. I'm not criticizing them. They go visit. But how much they know, as much as I know, because I'm hungry. I don't think anybody's as hungry as me. It cannot be. I have to be constantly on it. And you remember when I set up all my cats right there? They keep me uncomfortable. They make me uncomfortable. You're like, well, why are you keeping them if they make you uncomfortable? Because I can't be comfortable. I have to get out of my comfort zone. That's why I have them. Because they make me uncomfortable. They wake me up at weird times. The shit, I have to clean the shit. Oh, that reminds me. I have to actually clean their poop today. Oh, yeah, wet urine, smell, and then poo-poo. Yeah, man, disgusting. But yeah, man, that's life. And I ask God, please, God, I want their best health as well. God, I mean, I want their best health. My health and their health, family's health, your health. It's very important. Please remember, what do you put in your stomach? What do you eat? Extremely important. I'm telling you throughout my experience, all right, when I used to drink alcohol like fish, more than a fish could drink, all right? I'm talking about 30, 40 cases, cans. I used to have beer for breakfast. Breakfast. Six o'clock in the morning, I used to go to 7-Eleven to get some more. Yeah. 
Huh. Anyways, now, college, two years of learning this and that. My professor was such a brutal guy. <laughs> and remember this, not all professors are awesome. Some are, some are really assholes. We, some of us, we took that to the dean and we told, hey, this is, he's rude. He literally tells people to, hey, take your phone, get out of the class. Oh, you shouldn't do this. Oh, you, did you do this last night? Oh, you didn't get food. He's rude. He was rude, man. And, you know, most of us, we are like 20s, 21s and all, whatever. We took it to the dean. Dean didn't do much. So anyway, I failed pre-calculus and I found out I have to take this mofo again. Damn, man. Somehow I passed because it's a prerequisite, right? So then I have to take calculus. But anyway, passed this whole thing in three years. It was a struggle. I learned here and there. I met a you know, couple of friends. Federico from Brazil, this and that. Hey, man, Federico, it's been a while. This guy moved to uh, Brazil. He actually moved to USA from Brazil, got citizenship, and I don't know what happened. He studied here. And then he moved back. It's been a while. I haven't talked to him. Wow. Then I met. So two years. Then I moved. Throughout, I'm learning. I'm taking loan. I didn't have any jobs. No virtual nothing. I was a freelancer online throughout my life. And it came from Bangladesh. I used to write articles. <laughs> it's crazy. And somebody used to pay me. And yeah. So I was always a hustler in a way. And that's how it started. So I was always freelancing. Fiverr, Digital Point. All the forums, internet marketing, that's how I got started, 2007 or 6, 6, 2007. And then slowly, 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 I learned a lot of stuff. White hat, black hat, gray hat, and I realized the internet marketing field, opportunities, everything is awesome, but people behind it are dirty. Gurus, fake gurus, this, that. I had to figure out what path I wanted to choose while I was being in college. While I was being fed so much garbage, I was just trying to figure out, what am I going to do? Do I want college? I don't know. It's just weird. I was just drinking, partying, coming to college. I was barely doing stuff, literally. I was just exam. I started before the exam and I should go and give it. And yeah, of course, cheat. I, I did cheat. I'm sorry. I mean, what I mean by cheating is like, I mean, dude, it's just out there. Oh, yeah, you do. Okay. Okay. I mean, come on, man. Once in a while, it happened. It happened. I have to be real, right? It's not only me. A lot of people did worse things than that, I'm sure. But that shows you. Well, you know what? Who cheats? People who are not interested in that thing at all. It wasn't that I want to cheat and I want to get a job. I'm like, bro, can I just pass this class and get over with this? And till now, I don't know what's my degree for. I have an information systems bachelor's in science. It's hanging on my wall. Not exactly. In my imagination, basically. Right? That's it. It's, it's just there. Maybe I could have utilized it because everybody tells me that. Hey, you didn't do anything with it. You know, what you did, you, you could have done better. What do you mean by that? It's, life is not about just having a job. It's about a purpose, having a purpose. So what you want to do and enjoy that till the end of the day. That's it. For them, it's all about job, marriage, kids, grandkids, die, retire. I mean, no, this is exactly what Rockefeller wanted to do, right? Rockefeller. Yeah. Create college so you can create workers for us, them. We are the workers for them. Don't let, we don't need thinkers. We just need doers. People who will do what we say. <laughs> Bro, start thinking. And the moment you stop feeding yourself what's, like, you know, what's coming from Bill Gates Farms <laughs> and all the big dudes, Monsanto Farms, the better and the quicker you'll be able to think wise, better. Okay? And if you're in your 20s, you stop feeding yourself, I'll tell you this, you'll be super, super, extra, super rebel. You'll be 10 times superior to me, man. Right? And I want to see all those happen, like literally. I want to see all this 20, 20, 5, 20, 30 years, rebellious. When I say rebel, it's a mission. It's a purpose. It's not like physical violence. All right? It's violence with pen. <laughs> it's, it's wisdom. And yes, oppress, oppression. I, I hate oppression. I'm against oppression. Oppressing innocence. Hurting innocence, I'm against it. And I use physical force just for defense. All right? I've been doing martial arts. I have guns only for physical defense, all right? And I'm, yeah, ironically, I'm a Muslim and I'm a gun collector because I love gun collecting guns. I like shooting in the range. It's so weird. And then my mom says, why do you have some weird habits, hobbies? I have nunchucks because I love Bruce Lee. Why do you have some weird habits? Like I was a kid. You know, when I got my first nunchuck when I was seven years old. I bought it from my friend. He brought it in school. It was a plastic. 
And I said, hey, man, I want this. I told my dad, hey, man, give me some money, man. Nope. What do you want to buy? And then he actually made me another one with a medal because he used to work. His dad was a welder. He made me a medal. Oh, my God. And I took that medal back to Bangladesh. Oh, it's a long story. I don't want to talk about this. Yeah, it's a different country. And then guess what happened? Uh, one of my I gave it to one of my friends before coming to USA. He literally hit me up, uh, I think, two months ago. He says, I found this nunchuck. He literally sent me a picture, I think. He says, I found the nunchuck, but I, I, I don't think I can bring it to USA or send it to you because it's a weapon or whatever. He says, um, one of my niece, a nephew, nephew wants it. You, you, you want to give it? I'm like, you know what? With, with love and respect, if he takes care of it, yeah, it's a legendary nunchuck. It's my second nunchuck ever. Yes, he can keep it. So anyways, thanks for listening to me so far. Now, actually, let's finish it off, okay? So, wow, I'm actually going far. So, two and a half years so far, gone, okay? I was like, okay, business administration, still doing this online thing. Then I transfer, obviously. After two years, you go to four years college. Now, we're in four years. So, I go to VCU. And I was like, okay, information systems, computers. Because I love marketing. But marketing, I don't see anything to learn from marketing. Marketing and business, you do in real life. Why would I get a degree for that? So I thought, you know, computers is like in demand in some, some way. If I have to, have to have a degree, let's have information systems. So I went that route, right? And I took this and, you know, whatever classes. One of my professors, uh, my uh, psychology, psychology? I'm not, I forgot the name, psychology. Communication, I believe. So communication class, okay? Um, management, I think it was a management, 301 or something, I forgot. So this dude referred me to this thingy, the fraternity, okay? So we didn't have Lambda Chi Alpha in our college. There were other fraternities, we didn't have Lambda Chi Alpha, okay, LXA. We wanted to bring it to our university. So they were looking for some founders. So he put my name and with a couple of other Asian dudes, Tuan, and it's very diverse. Our fraternity is very diverse. A lot of Asians, Vietnam, Vietnam, Vietnamese, um, obviously we have a lot of blacks, white, I'm the only guy. I'm the only brown. No, we have brown, but Indians, maybe one or two. I'm the only Bengali, probably. The only one so far. Yeah, I know, I know. So anyways, so the point is, a couple of us, we formed. We, we were initiated, right? Wow, crazy. Yeah, a lot of... I, we went through a journey. It's an initiation process. Uh, you know, whole day goes through that, blindfolded, this and this, brotherhood, campfire. Yeah, sure. Quite a bunch of stuff, right? Got initiated. That's when it started, 2011, I believe so. Yeah, 11. So, okay, so far so good. I'm still in college, getting into debt. I'm still working online, no job offline, no nine to five, whatever, still doing that. Trying to figure it out, okay? Because yeah, whatever. And I failed in calculus. So I failed in pre-calculus twice, now I failed in calculus once. Now I have to take second time because if I don't pass, I can't finish my college. I'm like, oh my God, I've taken, I have to take it again. So I took it again, second time. Did I fail the second time? I'm not sure if I failed twice in calculus. Yeah, but I failed twice. I know I failed once in pre-calculus. I failed once in calculus, for sure. But I think I failed twice in something. <laughs> Either one of them. Okay, anyway. Somehow passed, all right? Then got through, whatever. And now, so throughout this whole college lifestyle, I'm partying, I'm drinking, I'm coming home. And I mentioned this previously, right? I don't understand the purpose. Like, go to school, learn whatever they give you. I'm just doing my stuff, whatever. I'm just focusing people on the phone. Come back and do my thing. So what's happening? Like, I don't see anything, like, out of it. No productivity. If you really ask me right now, what was I, what are we, what were we trying to get out of it? I don't know. Because if you ask me, I was trying to wait, how, when can I go home? And, you know, have a beer and just get back on computer and do this. Every day we were partying, man. I was, you know, I lived in downtown. Obviously, I live in downtown for 11 years, 10 years, 10 and a half, 11 years with different roommates and stuff, which I'm going to talk about in a second and that's it, okay? So that's how my lifestyle, whole thing went in five years. So five years, college, 2013, and I graduated and my GPA was decent enough. I didn't get a job until I mentioned. If you watch my previous episodes, I talked about my job. It was just one job I got, which was on, from online, from work from home, but I was doing this Forex thing for a company as a marketing guy. I was getting $600 a week. For like six months or so when I got laid off by that guy. And that's when I had to make the right, you know, hard decision. And that is like go in, in the internet marketing thing. And again, this whole 10 years was an insane journey so far. And I wish I could tell you, wow, I'm successful. 
Looks like the journey is just getting started, amigo. That was just one chapter, one season. Now it's just getting started. I'm here to compete with anybody. Doesn't matter what age level. 16, 17, 19, 20, 50, 60, 100. Doesn't matter. There's no excuse for me. Okay? I have to up, up my game. That's all I can tell you. And that's, that's what I am for. I don't know what others are doing, what others are saying that, what gurus preach what. I have my own way of doing things. And I don't know if it's correct or wrong or right. There's a thing called moral ethics and stuff that we follow, right? So based on that, yeah, I have some principles. That's simple as that. And that's it. Five years, shenanigan. Don't know what I got out of it. Now, let me tell you about the roommate stuff. I talked about the fraternity, right? Let me tell you a little bit of fraternity, first of all. And then I'll tell you my roommate's stuff. A lot of parties, a lot of fun. But not everything that seems like it's, it's, not, does, you know, it's not that way. Of course, there's a fee. You, you pay a fee. And I mentioned, oh my God, is this none of the MLM Ponzi? Like you get in, then you just communicate with each other. You get more people in the system. Yeah, I mean, you recruit more people. You recruit. It's a brotherhood. You recruit. So it's like, literally like an MLM, okay? I'm probably the only one saying like this. Because I don't think anybody, but hey, I, I, there's something to learn from this, believe it or not. My brothers, they're still out there. John is 60, uh, almost 60, I think so. He's 60, single, something to learn from him. His mother, Italian, John Quagliano, his mother, Italian, passed away, was an artist who came from Italy a long time back, bought a house. She passed, but she gave, it, gave that to John. And I'm homeless here. <sighs> then my brother, Nikolai Volko, who was an orphan, who was picked from Siberia, and picked up by two, two, two guys who actually adapted them, him. And he is an artist. I showed you, the, oh, well, I didn't show you the painting, but he actually has a painting. He did it for me. And uh, he has another painting he did for me. I paid him. I paid him, obviously. <laughs> it was a commissioned. One was obviously free as a brotherhood. But he has talent. All unique people, man. Like, seriously, look at that. Orphan dude picked out of nowhere. That guy's struggling. I mean, he's not struggling, I would say. Like, we all are struggling, but he's a hustler. He's picking up stuff and restoring it. He's doing art shows. He's making money. He's making, making way more money than me right now. And he's making money, legitimate money, by actually doing art and offering stuff. All kinds of people, okay? And then we had people who are like slacking and doing stupid stuff. We had a guy who became totally neo-Nazi. And we, I mentioned this in my, my YouTube. We had to distance. Because there are people who would do stupid stuff. If we can't relate, we just move off. Like, that's it. There are fraternity parties. We have places. I represented my fraternity in Tennessee. Uh, you know, the, I went out there. Um, man, it was a whole seminar. A lot of things to learn, actually. We have fraternity houses in different campuses, in different states. If I go to other states, I can actually live in their like, campus. I can actually go to their fraternity house. Like, we have a frat house. Yeah, it's a, it's a Greek frat house. The one you see in American Pie, all the movies. Greek frat house. Those are there. The sororities, yeah, sure. Sororities are there. Fraternities there. You go mix around. We party. We date. Quite a bunch of stuff, okay? I've done... We had fun. We went for pool. We did... It was fun. Okay, get it. But what's... What, where's the real life thing now? I don't know about everybody else, but now that fraternity can come into play. If you join the fraternity and you feel struggling for work and all that, this is... I've seen this one dude yesterday on LinkedIn post. Hey, um, hey, brothers, I'm from Lambda Alpha. Um, I'm in Denver. And if anybody's looking for, I'm a chiropractor and I'm here to connect and, you know, so that's how they get connection. They can get businesses and sure, it can help somewhere. You see what I mean? So you, it depends on how you want to see it. I can, I'm still in touch with like only a few brothers right now. Yeah. Out of so many, only three of them. I don't talk to even three. I mean, in, a, in touch means I, if I wanted to go out, I could reach them right now. But others, I don't know yet. They probably moved out different places, but three are on my list. Like I can really call them if I wanted right now. So, yeah, you do get something out of it. Every, you know, it's up to you how you want to utilize it. A lot of them, they know a lot more because they were outgoing. So it depends. So anyways, but that's one thing. And it's just coming. But I still think college is a scam. 100%. Like, what are you learning? What is it that I got out of it besides debt? There's nothing besides this fraternity and this whole thing that I taught, my, taught myself and connection. Because if I didn't go to college, I wouldn't met Nico. I wouldn't have met a couple of people. That's it. So that's the only good thing that happened to me. I'm not too sure if this, Nico is a good thing to me, but anyway, <laughs> because we both did a lot of shenanigans. But regardless, there's some certain things, some professors, some experiences, yeah, certain things I've learned and I can tell you so I can save you money, basically. That's the only thing I can do. There's not, nothing else. Buy textbook, learn. A lot of things probably have changed. It's 10 years. 
I graduated end of 2013. It's almost 10 years ago. Right now, why? Unless you want to be a medical doctor, unless you want to be an engineer, maybe. Or engineer, I don't know about the field right now. Because I'm, I, I'm in a passion in AI and crypto, and that's my field. I feel that's going to do well. But not, and you can teach yourself. AI, another topic, maybe. Okay. And yes, I did want to talk about my love life, which, is, which was a disaster. But you know what? I will not do that. Maybe th that'll be a secret. Someday I will explore and maybe spill the bean on some other episode or some other, someone's podcast. Who knows? Maybe somebody will invite me someday. Maybe. Once I become too popular, maybe someone will invite me. Then I'll talk about it. But for now, I think this is irrelevant. So this is going to be my maybe last episode for this season. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Unless you want to hear something more from me. Because the next season, I actually don't know what I want to do. I want to take like a, just a few weeks break and, you know, because I can. I have multiple channels and I have to be productive. I have to utilize my time, literally. Like whatever makes me, because I told you I'm running out of money and I, I need more money. It's not for myself, but for my business to function. And that's what matters to me. I can take a loan if I want. My credit score is high, but I'm trying to be very careful with my choices. Because I told you, decisions are very important. And believe it or not, please be wise. Whichever position you're in, today you might be a 20-year-old dude. Tomorrow you might have kids. I kid you not, 99.9% of my friends, 100% probably, they all are married. And 90% have kids. And I, let me tell you this, the guy I talked about, neo-Nazi guy who joined, I mentioned he actually uh, sent me a friend request a long time back. I saw that he has two kids now. He's married. I'm single here. Cat Papa. Those guys, neo-Nazis are settled down with kids. I'm here preaching, preaching, preaching. This is true jihad. This is true jihad. You get the point? This is true jihad. Striving. Striving. Trying not to give in to the dark side. Even if it warns me, even if it's like that, the Vader, Darth Vader is he's calling. Yoda, won't you be here? No, Vader, get off. Yoda, Yoda, where are you, Yoda? Uncle Yoda, Yoda. Yeah, I want to stay straight. So, fraternity is gone. Now let's talk about, let's talk 10 more minutes about my roommate and all that stuff, right? And then I'm out. I live with all kinds of roommates, man. All kinds. Some good, some bad. I had gay roommates. I don't know if I should touch on the topic, but it makes me think sometimes that when people question their own identity, I'm sure, listen, keeping all that aside, I'll just tell you one thing, okay? And it does affect, it does affect. Because if you come and tell my kids, hey, do you know who you are? Are you sure you're a boy? Are you sure? That's going to bother me. That bothers me. You can do whatever you want in your, like, island. I don't care. But that's what bothers me. And I see that happen in schools. Yes, it's crazy, right? If you, go, if you go to public schools and stuff, I told my sister, just be careful. Just be aware. Just be aware. Forget about being careful. Be aware. 99% of the people are not aware of what's happening around them, including like the kids and stuff. So the kids are walking around and the mom, mom is like busy on the phone. Sure. But understand what's, what's the kid learning, what's in the kid's mind. I mean, you know, like it's like you're ignoring and trying to create a bigger problem down the road which is going to explode and then you won't be taking it. And you're like, oh yeah, it's your fault. So instead of blaming each other, maybe just take acknowledge, acknowledge and, you know, take responsibility from the beginning. I've seen all the sides play out. Like my, one of my, um, and by the way, one of my uncle, he's an atheist. <laughs> he's an, um, and also, by the way, I also have a very um, multiracial family in a way. My uh, cousins, my sister, my cousin's sister, is dating a white guy then my cousin sister is also married to a Paki guy so it's, i have a diverse so i'm telling you that it's interesting that i can talk about quite a bunch of stuff without being racist i guess right or without being sexist racist whatever religion list yeah islamist crazy so that's the thing so yeah now again man i don't want to go if it, there's so much to talk about but i have to like figure out how i can break this down and Maybe that, this is where I need to pay attention down the road. Because right now, the struggle is so real that I have to actually make something work and then I'll come and talk about it. Because I can't, most people come and talk about it and they're monetized. They're making a living out of it. I don't. None of the stuff I'm doing here, talking and all that, they don't, it doesn't make me any money. Like in terms of it doesn't pay my bills at all. I've been doing YouTube and stuff for almost three, three years now. 
and I barely made $200 a year or so. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's, it's real. From my channels, okay? All the money I do is behind the scenes. And affiliate marketing, as I mentioned, Amazon stuff, yeah, it's a dirty work. That's why maybe this is what happens. My hands are like aching <laughs> because it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Anyways, hope you got something out of it. So coming back to that, all kinds of roommates. It's important to know who you take, what you take. And yeah, you can question. It's up to you. You question kids. But this world has, again, gone places where I can imagine. You can doubt this. I've lived with. Now, coming back to the topic. I had two, three, three, made three roommates who were gay. Mike was the best one so far. He was a dancer. <laughs> he was a fun guy. He was a fun guy. But one day he did something very nasty. I mean, this is going to piss off a lot of people. But I want to keep that aside. I'll tell you another, another incident. One of my friends, Buddy, D, he was here. He was, uh, he was at my place. We had a party. We threw a party. There were a lot, um, let me tell you another thing. The college I come from, there was a lot of gay parties. All right? A lot of gay parties. No issues. Let me tell you this. There are a lot of gay parties. There were. One of my friend, he actually wanted to go to gay parties because he, for, according to him, you can, make a, you can meet a lot of girls there. You can make a, meet a lot of bitches, a lot of chicks in the gay parties. I'm like, okay. It's, it's a thing. Gay bars. Because there are a lot of chicks in there. I mean, what? Okay. But that's not my thing. That's his thing. That was his thing back, back then. So it was okay. All right. And yeah, there were a lot of parades and stuff in, in, over there. I happened to land in so many places where I didn't know it was a gay party. And I was like, and people were staring at me. Ooh. I'm like, well, yeah. Dude, are you single? Like, no. What is this? Oh, hell no. I'm out. All right. Yeah. One day in my house, right? All the parties. My, one of my friend D, he was lying. He was on the couch. And this drunk gay dude, he comes to me. It's a lot of gay dudes, a lot of, you know, all, sure. Comes to me and says, hey, man, are you single? I'm like, hey, listen, I'm straight. I'm not here to discuss all this thing, all right? I mean, get this. This is what pisses me off, literally. Like, that, that's like harassment, if you want to call it. Maybe in that level, it's, it's annoying, right? So, as, uh, and it happens. Okay, fine. That's why I said, if you can't handle your drinks and stuff, don't do it. And this is the worst thing. I'm like, no, get out. All right, your friend, in the, your friend on the couch, he's sleeping. He's so cute. Yeah. Why, what are you talking about, man? Like, you know, pissing me off. Um, do you think he's going to mind if I go sit beside him and give him a kiss? All right, now that's like annoying the F out of me. You know? I was like, you know what, dude, just, just go and do whatever. And just, that's it. You know, I just, I just moved out. And I was just like with my drink. Guess what? I literally see that he walked towards him. He was lying down. He was literally lying down like, you know, comfy. He was lying down. This dude goes close to him, literally here, and reaches out to kiss him. And D, like, oh my God, his reaction was like this. <gasps> and he was like, what are you doing? I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck you up if you do this again. Oh my God, dude. That was... So sorry, I, I didn't know. I, I just thought you were so cute. I just thought you were so cute, you know? Yeah, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fuck you up. Just get out of here. Don't do this kind of shit, man. Those things will give this whole wrong, you know? My point is, first of all, yeah, I have issues. Guy and girl, I don't understand this gender thing. If people question that, that's, it's up to them. But if you come and preach and tell me and all this stuff, like, you know, kids, hey, I think you should go to the drag show. You should do this. That's a problem. For me, that's a problem. You can do whatever, but that's not, you know, as long as you're out of my lawn. So, yeah, don't feed my kids and my family with other bullshit until they decide that, hey, yes, I've chosen that I want to be this. That's, that's up to them then. But in the beginning, I don't want them to be influenced with BS, ideologies and stuff, which doesn't add to my, you know, thing. That's not in my principles. But yes, I have no issues with that. I live, like I said, Mike was one of my best ones. Then another one, the second one was, uh, oh my God. Second one was, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name, but he was married. He was a Brazil, Puerto Rican. So his husband was a Brazilian and his husband was in Brazil. He came to do his PhD. No, not, it was master's. 
Oh, and he was a funny ass guy, man. He was a Puerto Rican guy, you know, curly hair, short. He was very funny, and you know, and we had tough times because one of my roommates was so annoying, and one of my roommates was Afghani, an Afghani guy. Okay, so Afghanistan. Oh my God, he was a trouble. He was a mess. That guy, he had issues with this guy. He had issues with everybody. <sighs> he had issues with another another kid who was like youngest one, nineteen. I think nine, he was nineteen. And then this uh, guy, oh my God, he had issues with everybody, literally, believe it or not. Horrible. Oh, look, this guy's cooking. And this guy, oh my God, why is he so rude? He should do this. I'm like, yeah, bro, I know, I know. Just, just calm down. I can't help it. And that mofo, that, that Afghani dude, he called cops on me. I was smoking weed in the room and the cops literally knocked my door. <laughs> I... <laughs> Open and this is the lady cop and this guy, uh, you know, and he's like, it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday. And it's like, and they were embarrassed. It's a Sunday. They were not supposed to be in my place. And they were like, um, yes, so we got a complaint from your roommate. What? For what? He says that you're not doing some, like you're not um, abiding by something that he's blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Man, my, this roommate was a mess. If I just think about it, like, it makes me so mad. Like, literally, I feel like I need to do a cage match, like, match. Like, like, put me in a cage match with him so I can take out all my frustration, you know? Like, you know, that's the way I can do it. Either I can talk or I beat, beat like, fight. That's the only way I can release my stress. I work out or I, I speak. There's nothing else I can do. So, that dude, I, have, I had so many things down he says i don't i don't want you to keep so many things down it's also my house why don't you take everything in your room so we have four different rooms i have my own separate room he has his own room upstairs i have multiple things down there because i've been the longest guy there living there for long longest time and i had roommates every now and then they were like pakistanis I've, all kinds of roommates i have believe it or not arabs one dude from saudi he came he was so huge he came and he was like, man, I have issues. I have to go through the gastric surgery or all that stuff. I'm like, okay. He, can't, he comes, he goes to college for a month or so. Then he just have to go back to Saudi and get this thing. And he goes and he never comes back. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what just happened? Like, is this how it works? Whenever he decides he comes to USA and then he just leaves without any, in the college and whatever. I'm like, wow. I mean, man. Uh, and then I had this Moroccan guy. Who, who did something, I don't know. He was another guy who I had issues with to some extent. He was okay, but he was wild. He was just messy. Issues. And yeah, he used to fuck every day. Every day he had a new girl next door. He used to fuck every day. One day in the bathroom. <laughs> it, it was annoying. Because you're, you're hearing her moan and scream, and then I'm trying to work. And then the, you know, this wood, this USA wooden apartments, man. It's horrible sometimes. One day, brutal issues. But I'm coming to that issues. One day, I still remember this dude. He brought some girl home. He brought some girl home. This Moroccan guy brought some girl home. The girl ran out naked at midnight. Ran out naked. The cops come in. The cops come in and question. I didn't know what happened. So I just, they call me. I come. The cops come and ask me, um, so you're his roommate. I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, what happened? Well, like, did you see anything happen? I'm like, no. What is... He just bought a girl and that's it. She just ran. What? But yeah, I just found her. She just she was running naked on the streets <laughs> in downtown. Like, what did he do? And I asked him, like, what did he do? He's like, no, bro, I didn't do anything. She was suffering in the streets, so I thought I'd just call her. And then I'm like, bro, please, can you not do that? You're not even a citizen. Like, a lot of them, they came. They were not citizens. I got my citizenship at the end of 13, but they were not citizens. I'm like, like this guy, Afghani guy, he wasn't a citizen. Oh, my God, I'm going to come to this Afghani guy because he's the only special guy I'm going to talk about. And there was a Pakistani guy. Pakistani guy. He was Shia. I'm Sunni. He's Shia. Muslim, but Shia. See, all different kinds, man. And again, he, was, he has a totally different story. He and me, we caught mice in our apartments. So, yeah, that's another story. Mice infested our kitchen. And the tenants, the landlords wouldn't exchange the, the whole kitchen, the thingy, the stove. So we had to play straps. Oh, my God. What a journey. What a journey. We thought of getting a cat, and, but it didn't work out. But anyway, so now again. Oh, I also had a drug dealer who used to sell weed to me as well, Leon. He was good. Uh, multiple other dudes. Uh, different kinds of people. Like I said, I'll probably... One dude moved from um, Nigeria. 
he was married with kids in Nigeria. He came to do PhD. He was also my roommate. Wow. And then, believe it or not, he later brought his uh, wife to USA along his, with his kids. And I hope they're doing fine. But yeah, that's one thing. Again, coming back to this, this guy, Bilal guy, right? Uh, this Afghani guy. I think he was privileged. He thought he was privileged. He said something like, and you do understand, so Afghani and the US a thing, right? And by the way, no disrespect, uh, no hate or nothing for Afghani people, okay? Hey, I love the food. I understand the culture to some extent. I, I have friends around. I mean, you know, okay, man. But this is one individual or one couple of dudes who are going to ruin it. Just like in Islam, there are people. And wow, this just reminds me. It's, uh, one more thing before I finish off that topic, because I said Islam, right? Islam does, you know what? People don't choose Islam. Islam chooses people. Think about this. It's very deep. Islam chooses people. People don't choose Islam. So if you think about it for a second, all these dudes who are actually killing innocent people in the name of Islam, they, they're choosing Islam? No. They can't choose. Who are they to choose? Who gave them the decision? Like, who gave them the choice? No. Islam says, dude, no. Move. If Islam was, an, if Islam was a human being, yeah, hey, no disrespect, Islam. But I'm saying, Islam would just, just like, like say, hey, man, move away. No, you don't choose me. I choose you. And you are no, you don't deserve me. You have no rights. You didn't earn me. You have to earn it. You have to earn Islam. Right? You have to earn it through your actions, through your deeds. Yeah. Deep thought. Just thought about it. So why I'm saying this, because of, of course, Bilal, he, this Afghani, he's a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. So now you might be thinking, wow. Yeah, but I had the worst time with this guy. Worst time in whatever, 10 years. The guy who calls cops on me, right? So now finishing that story, he comes, calls, calls cops on me, right? There were times he, we were sitting down having food together. And there were times like this. Like we had issues all the time. So I realized there is a, he has a problem. He's risky, extremely risky. I can't take him as a friend. I can't share everything with him because this guy's problem. One day I share something with him. Next day, this guy starts eating all my food. <laughs> what kind of... Man, really? Imagine college lifestyle. I have my own food. I cook my food. This guy, like, he can treat. He's like, oh, I can eat. You can eat my food, bro. I'm like, bro, I didn't ask it. I don't want it. I don't want your food. I mean, that's the problem. Like, once you, you have to have that understanding, which was messy with him. And guess what? It wasn't only with me. It was with everybody else. When that happens, you know where the problem is. It was like, oh, not me? No. I'll live with all kinds of roommates. Ask them. 99% will tell you pretty much what I am right now. It's what it is. All right? So, again, coming to this, he calls the cops because I decided not to move my thing. And he decided to call the cops on me for that. Can you believe this? And he decided that he will take all my stuff and put it in the balcony, in the porch. And he did that. He took whatever stuff downstairs, he put it in the balcony. Because he said, hey, my friends are going to come and party here. So I think I want you to move your stuff out of here. In my seven, eight years of history, nothing happened. And all of a sudden, this guy comes out of nowhere, lives beside me, in, you know, and then he decides to do this thing. I'm like, oh my God, dude. The wrong one. Because every time, the one manager who's in charge of the thing, who brings in, you know, gives the roommates, they know my lifestyle. They know my way I do things. I've been the longest tenant there. So they know, you know, that I am straightforward, this and this. And they're very careful picking roommates for me and all that stuff. But I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Okay? So now... This guy, so I asked the cops, I'm like, hey, can I file a charge on this guy? A civil file because he violated, you know, because he took my stuff out. He can't touch my stuff. And then they said, yeah, maybe you can do that. I was like, <laughs> I'm looking at the guy. I'm like, Yo, you shouldn't have done this to me. Because now you're just putting me, you're putting, putting yourself on my list. You're pissing me off. If you do this kind of stuff, you know, I'm not being, you know, that was nothing for me. Because... I could have taken care of that. That was a pest. I could have taken care of that. I was like, no, okay, let me be calm. Let me be calm. Because that's the life. I chose to be in that position. I was like, okay, I want to be in this mess. I could live by myself, but I decided to learn from people around me just to see how their lifestyle. Yeah, for real. A lot of my friends are like, hey, move alone. Nico, my friend, he's alone. This guy's alone. So I could do that. But I was like, nah, it's been, it'll be fun to see how it works out in a different level. So that happened. One of the worst experiences. One day, my friend Ronnie, at imagine Ronnie, he was actually working there. He was one of the, he was a, the top handle guy. Like he, he used to handle, handle most of the issues there. And he turned out to be my friend. So he saw me and he was like, hey man, there's a big room in apartment this. It just got wicked. Uh, it's, uh, it's empty. So um, 
yeah, it's bigger than, it's the biggest room we have. And you might, if you want to move, but it's, you got to pay $100 extra or something. I said, yeah, I don't care, man, let's move. Overnight, little by little, I transferred everything out. And one, he didn't even have any clue. One day, believe it or not, I just, he just saw me gone, literally. And he saw me down, so he's like, hey, man, you just moved out? I'm like, yep, that's it, silent. I'm mean, this guy came to USA at so-called refugee thingy. You know, you understand the Afghani thingy, right? Yeah, he was one of them. And he came and started bragging. My dad is a big shot in Afghanistan. You know, we used to do this and that. And, and he goes to Maryland. He buys a Mercedes. He comes, drives around like a zombie. Like, this is rude. Imagine coming to America and you're talking to an American. Yeah, I'm a Bengali American. I love Bangladesh, but I love America as well. This, this is the country where, you know, I... Spend what, 15 years now? Literally, I'm, I've learned, I've given my time, paid my dues, taxes. What are you talking about? Come on, man. So if something goes wrong, whether against, first is something wrong against my country, against my family, yeah, against my religion, which is peace, honesty, transparency, no oppression. I'll talk about it. It says, you do stop bad with your action. If you can't, do it with your mouth, which I'm trying. And if I can't, do it in your heart. Despise it. That's it. So this is probably one of my longest episodes. And I don't know who's going to watch, who's not going to watch, but I got this out. <sighs> It's so much easier, I guess, to talk to somebody, maybe, because right now I'm talking to camera and I can get off, you know, off topic, but that's why I'm thinking, okay? But come, before coming to that and ending it, this, there was a lot to learn from this whole journey, you know, like, believe it or not, brutal. I think about them. I still think about them. I don't think they think about me at all, zero, but think about them as in like memories. Wow. Every one of them I have, I, I remember like uh, literally. All the Mike, even Mike, I mentioned, he's on my list. I hope they're all doing fine. I hope they're doing well, you know? I, I, I don't want anybody to suffer. I, I want to do all them strife. Go for it. But not at the cost of somebody else. Not at the cost of lying or damaging somebody else. That's all. If my dad and mom wanted to live a better life or retire at the cost of putting their son down the drain, you should have just told me early. That's all. I mean, just for real. Just told me early so I could have made better decisions. I could have utilized my money and said, oh, you know what? I don't think they're going to do anything. So I need to take a step up. That's all. So yeah, I have, I do have family members who have an advantage over me. It's very difficult to be in that environment where they all can get together and do stuff where I can't because I have things and dues and bills and other stuff. If they work, if they, they have no job. Some of them just have no job. They have a job, no job, doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't concern them. It's up to them. It's their lifestyle. But for me, it matters. For me, every hour matters. Every minute matters now. It does. Even if I'm sitting in my room for one hour, I'm trying my best to utilize it, to be in peace, to meditate, at least utilize it in a way. Not just idolize or waste time watching some garbage or something, you know? I do my best not to do that anymore because it just can't. I mean, maybe if you're in a position where your interest goes up every day and you have your bills keep coming and your time goes faster than the bills you pay. I guess, yeah. But here, it's not about me. It's not about me complaining and all that stuff. I will take it. I will take it. I have no other choices. <laughs> yeah, that's the, only cho that's the only choice I don't have. Giving up is the only choice I don't have. Every other options I want in life. Giving up, I don't want that choice. Oop. Not at all. All right. So now, ladies and gents, my friends, college is a scam indeed. And it's up to you. Ask yourself, is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? Or if you don't know that you like it or not, it's okay. You can change. But don't feed into yourself because of somebody else said that. Nope. They don't know anything. They don't know anything. How nobody knows anything about the future. Nobody has seen the future. Hence, hence in Islam, it says like secure the present. 
because you don't know the future. But but yet we have we are hopeful about the future. Yes, we are hopeful. But if you don't have kids, there's no future. I mean, that's the meaning of future, right? To spread and move forward. But anyways, thanks for listening. Whatever I said, 100% my opinion as well as my experience. 100% real. Zero fluffs. Zero fluffs. And I believe I will get out of this. I believe I will still be alive. And if anything happens to me, well, I did my best to get my message across. But if I'm still alive, I'll be kicking strong. I'll do my best to get out of it. And I'll show you exactly how, what I did, how I did. Some of you can take it as a business. Some of you can just use it as a side hustle just to make extra money. Just learn something from it. And that's about it. And last but not the least, before I end, I'm, like I said, this is my last episode. I'm thinking season two is just a thought. What if I reached out to a bunch of underdogs no, not popular at all. Less popular. Like, you know, 10,000, 1,000 followers, subscribers who are hungry, who want to make it, but they have some issues in terms of they're struggling in some field, some aspect, maybe some graphic, maybe algorithm, whatever. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'll see if I can, you know, I'm just thinking. This, this, is, this is an idea because you see people do interviews with all the popular dudes. What if I did with underdogs, with people who don't exist in the public eye? You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's very di difficult to pull this off because, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Like I said, it's not guaranteed, but this is how we learn, isn't it? If I can actually help somebody with some of the tips I have, because I use a lot of, utilize a lot of tools and AI tools and stuff. So if I can like, oh, wow, you could do this with this tool. That could solve the problem, maybe. And that's something to learn from that. And also you get to know that person as well. But at the same time, I have to be very careful who I pick. Because if anybody, I told you this before, scammers hang out with scammers. Grifters hang out with grifters. SBF will hang out with dudes who are in that same level. I mean, this is what it is, right? So if I, people who don't share the same vision like me, I have to be very careful. So that is where, yeah, I need to do the filtration and moderation and whatnot. But again, it's just a concept, an idea. And uh, it's going to be a concept until it's proven. So let me know your thoughts, honestly, if you happen to watch and listen to this podcast. Again, I appreciate your time. Oh my God, my, my stomach cramp, stress, really stressed. And yeah, stress is the worst thing ever. Like something that you, don't, you can get without doing anything, literally. It's just by thinking. Being in a position gives you stress. And that's not a good thing, ladies and gents. Try to do whatever you can to get out of stress, but don't do anything to go against humanity, all right? Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one very soon.